Suzanne Plachette, the actress known for her distinctively husky voice and her groundbreaking portrayal of the sharp-witted Emily Hartley on The Bob Newhart Show in the 1970s, had a life filled with rare and profoundly unique moments. With her striking combination of beauty and exceptional acting talent, Suzanne was often likened to the legendary Elizabeth Taylor during her prime. However, beneath the glitz and glamour of her successful career, Suzanne Plachette had her share of challenges and a dark side that often goes unnoticed by the public. If you are a fan of Suzanne, this video is definitely for you. Let's get started. Suzanne Plachette was the beloved daughter of Geraldine, née Kaplan, and Eugene Plachette, both of Jewish descent, whose families had emigrated from Russia and Austria, Hungary, in search of a better life. Geraldine, Suzanne's mother, was a multifaceted talent. She was not only an accomplished dancer, but also an artist who graced the stage under the enchanting pseudonym Geraldine Rivers. Her artistic pursuits undoubtedly left an indelible impression on Suzanne, shaping her future in the world of entertainment. On the other hand, Suzanne's father, Eugene Plachetta, was deeply ingrained in the world of theater. He initially worked as a stage manager at the Paramount Theater in Manhattan, contributing to the behind-the-scenes magic that brought live performances to life. Later in his career, he ascended to the role of a network executive, further cementing his influence in the entertainment industry. Suzanne's educational journey was also marked by a strong inclination towards the performing arts. She graduated from Manhattan's prestigious High School of Performing Arts, where she likely honed her early acting skills. Following her high school years, she embarked on a brief academic adventure at Syracuse University, but soon found her true calling. She transferred to Finch College to pursue her passion for acting more wholeheartedly. However, Suzanne's formal education in the art of acting reached its pinnacle when she enrolled at the Neighborhood Playhouse School of the Theater in Manhattan. Under the mentorship of renowned acting teacher Sanford Meisner, she underwent intensive training that would serve as the bedrock of her future success in the world of entertainment. World Suzanne Plachette, with her distinctive appearance and demeanor, left an indelible mark on both stage and screen. Described by the Boston Globe as possessing a sardonic charm and a voice with a sultry allure, her talents would captivate audiences for generations. At the remarkably young age of 20, Suzanne embarked on her journey into the world of acting, paving the way for a remarkable career. Her initial foray into the performing arts began on the stage, where she showcased her acting prowess and versatility. In 1957, Suzanne made her highly anticipated Broadway debut in Meyer Levin's play Compulsion. This production was an adaptation of Levin's novel, inspired by the infamous Leopold and Loeb case, a true crime story that had captured the public's imagination. Her performance was met with critical acclaim, setting the stage for a promising career in the world of theater. The following year, Suzanne took on another challenging role in the debut of The Cold Wind and the Warm by the esteemed playwright S. N. Berman. This production took place at the Schubert Theater in New Haven, Connecticut, under the direction of the renowned Harold Clerman and produced by Robert Whitehead. Her involvement in such a high-profile theatrical production further solidified her reputation as a formidable talent in the theater world. In 1959, Suzanne added a comedic touch to her repertoire when she appeared in the play Golden Fleecing. Starring alongside Constance Ford and Tom Poston, this production showcased her versatility as an actress who could seamlessly transition between dramatic and comedic roles. Interestingly, Tom Poston would go on to become her third husband, marking a significant personal chapter in her life. In a pivotal turn of events, she found herself in contention for the coveted role of Louisa Gypsy in the original production of the iconic musical Gypsy. In the same year that she dazzled audiences in The Cold Wind and the Warm, her aspiration to portray Louise Gypsy was a testament to her ambition and versatility as an actress. To prepare for the role, Suzanne embarked on an intriguing journey of self-improvement, 
she devoted her mornings to taking striptease lessons under the guidance of the legendary choreographer Jerome Robbins. This commitment to mastering the art of striptease was a testament to her dedication to her craft, and it underscored her willingness to go the extra mile to bring authenticity to her characters. However, as fate would have it, Suzanne found herself in a close competition for the role with another talented actress, Sandra Church. In his autobiography, Arthur Lawrence, the author of Gypsy, offered insight into the challenging decision that the production team faced. He noted that Suzanne Plachette was undoubtedly the superior actress, but Sandra Church possessed a remarkable singing ability that was a perfect fit for the role. Ultimately, they decided to cast Sandra Church for the role of Louise Gypsy, highlighting the complex choices that often define casting decisions in the world of theater. Despite this setback, Suzanne Plachette's determination and talent continued to shine. In February 1961, she stepped into the role of Anne Sullivan Macy in The Miracle Worker, succeeding the celebrated Anne Bancroft. This production paired her with the young and talented Patty Duke, who portrayed Helen Keller. The play, which explored the remarkable teacher-student relationship between Anne Sullivan and Helen Keller, showcased Suzanne's ability to deliver powerful and emotionally charged performances. Suzanne Plachette's transition from the stage to the silver screen marked the beginning of a successful career in film. Her early screen credits showcased her versatility and talent, solidifying her status as a rising star in Hollywood. Among her early film appearances, The Geisha Boy was a notable entry in her filmography. Released in 1958, this comedy starred the legendary Jerry Lewis and provided Suzanne with an opportunity to showcase her acting skills on the big screen. Her natural charm and comedic timing were evident in this lighthearted film. In 1962, Suzanne appeared in Rome Adventure, a romantic drama that allowed her to explore a different genre. This film, directed by Delmer Daves, was a significant step in her film career, demonstrating her ability to tackle a range of roles. Another notable film from this period was Fate is the Hunter, released in 1964. This suspenseful drama featured Suzanne in a supporting role alongside heavyweights like Glenn Ford and Rod Taylor, further establishing her presence in the world of cinema. However, it was her role in Alfred Hitchcock's iconic suspense film, The Birds, that truly catapulted her into the spotlight. Released in 1963, the film remains a classic in the suspense genre. Suzanne's performance as Annie Hayworth, a schoolteacher caught up in a terrifying bird attack, garnered critical acclaim and made her a recognizable face in the industry. Following the success of The Birds, Suzanne Plachette was cast in 40 Pounds of Trouble, a comedy film co-starring Tony Curtis and Phil Silvers. Tony Curtis also produced the film through his own production company, Curtis Enterprises. This film was a notable project for several reasons. Firstly, it was the first motion picture ever filmed at Disneyland, adding a unique and iconic backdrop to the story. Secondly, 40 Pounds of Trouble was distributed by Universal International Pictures, underscoring the studio's confidence in Suzanne's rising star power. The film's release in late 1962 further solidified her presence in the film industry. In 1966, Suzanne had the opportunity to work alongside the legendary Steve McQueen in the Western drama film Nevada Smith. This collaboration with McQueen further solidified her status as a respected actress in Hollywood. Her ability to hold her own opposite such a formidable leading man spoke to her talent and versatility as a performer. Suzanne's career reached new heights with her starring role in the comedy If It's Tuesday, This Must Be Belgium, opposite Ian McShane. Her performance in this film earned her a nomination for a Laurel Award, a testament to her ability to excel in comedic roles. The film's humorous take on the chaos of European tours resonated with audiences and showcased Suzanne's comedic timing. She also had the privilege of co-starring with the charismatic James Garner in two films. In the drama Mr. Budwing, 
Suzanne's on-screen chemistry with Garner was evident as they delivered compelling performances. In the Western comedy Support Your Local Gunfighter, she continued to showcase her versatility by taking on a role in a different genre. Suzanne Plachette was no stranger to family-friendly films, and she became a beloved figure in Walt Disney's cinematic universe. One of her notable roles was in The Shaggy D.A., 1976, where she played a key part in the entertaining escapades of a man who turns into a dog. Her presence in Disney films added a touch of magic and charm to these beloved family classics. In Hot Stuff, 1979, Suzanne took on the lead role, once again highlighting her ability to anchor a film. Her on-screen charisma and talent were front and center in this comedy. Another notable role in her career was in Oh God, Book Two, 1980, where she played a key character in this sequel to the popular film Oh God. Her presence added depth and heart to the film's exploration of faith and spirituality. Suzanne's talents extended beyond live-action films. She lent her voice to animated characters, providing the voices of Yubaba and Zeniba in the English dub of Hayao Miyazaki's Academy Award-winning film, Spirited Away. Her contribution added depth to the film's characters and storytelling. Additionally, she voiced Zira in Disney's direct-to-video film The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, replacing Kathleen Turner, and even sang the song My Lullaby. Her voice work continued to showcase her versatility as a performer, allowing her to connect with audiences of all ages. Suzanne Plachette's career took a significant turn in 1971 when television producers took notice of her captivating presence during an appearance on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson on May 19th of that year. It was during this talk show appearance that an undeniable chemistry between Suzanne and Johnny Carson became apparent, sparking the interest of TV executives. Capitalizing on this newfound recognition, Suzanne was cast in a pivotal role on the popular CBS sitcom The Bob Newhart Show, which ran for an impressive six seasons from 1972 to 1978. In the series, she portrayed the character of Emily Hartley, the wife of Bob Newhart's character, Dr. Robert Hartley. This role would become one of the defining moments of her career and endeared her to audiences across the nation. Suzanne's portrayal of Emily Hartley was nothing short of exceptional, and her on-screen chemistry with Bob Newhart was palpable. Their witty banter and genuine connection brought a sense of authenticity to the show's portrayal of a married couple, making it one of the standout elements of the series. Her performance on The Bob Newhart Show was so outstanding that she received two Emmy nominations for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series during her tenure on the show. This recognition underscored her talent and contribution to the world of television comedy. Te One of the most memorable moments in television history occurred when Suzanne reprised her beloved role of Emily Hartley in the final episode of Bob Newhart's subsequent comedy series, aptly titled Newhart. In this unforgettable finale, viewers were treated to a surprising and brilliant twist. They discovered that the entire later series had been the dream of her husband, Bob Hartley, as he awakened next to her in the familiar bedroom set from The Bob Newhart Show. This creative twist not only paid homage to the legacy of the original show, but also provided a fitting and humorous conclusion to both series. In 1984, she embarked on a new venture with her own situation comedy titled Suzanne Plachette is Maggie Briggs. The show, however, faced challenges and was canceled after just seven episodes. While it may not have enjoyed a long run, Suzanne's presence in the show demonstrated her commitment to exploring different facets of her acting abilities. In 1989, Suzanne took on a dramatic role in the NBC series Nightingales, in which she portrayed the character Christine Broderick. The show, set in a hospital, provided a unique and compelling backdrop for exploring the lives of nurses. Although Nightingales lasted only one season, Suzanne's performance added depth to the series. 
One of the standout moments in her television career came in 1990 when she portrayed the infamous Manhattan hotelier, Leona Helmsley, in the television movie Leona Helmsley, The Queen of Mean. Suzanne's portrayal of the real-life Leona Helmsley was met with critical acclaim, earning her Emmy and Golden Globe Award nominations. Her ability to capture the essence of this controversial figure demonstrated her versatility as an actress, and the role remains one of her memorable achievements. In 1994, Suzanne starred opposite Hal Linden in the sitcom The Boys Are Back. Her presence in the show continued to showcase her comedic talents and her on-screen chemistry with Hal Linden added to the appeal of the series. She later took on the role of Claire Arnold, Mark Feuerstein's grandmother, in the sitcom Good Morning Miami during its first season. Her character added a unique dynamic to the show, and her performance was a highlight of the series. Suzanne also played a pivotal role in the popular ABC sitcom Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Teenage Daughter following the untimely death of John Ritter. She portrayed the mother of Katie Sagel's character, providing a maternal figure in the series during a challenging time. In one of her final television appearances, Suzanne Guest starred in three episodes of Will and Grace as the estranged mother of Megan Mullally's character, Karen Walker. Her presence in the show added depth to the character dynamics and further showcased her ability to leave a lasting impression in the world of television. Suzanne Plachetti's personal life was marked by both joy and sorrow as she navigated relationships and the challenges of motherhood. In 1964, Suzanne's marriage to Troy Donahue, her co-star from Rome Adventure and A Distant Trumpet, captured the attention of the media and fans alike. However, this union proved to be short-lived, culminating in divorce after a mere six months. The brevity of their marriage was a topic of speculation and scrutiny, a reflection of the intense spotlight under which celebrities often find themselves. Her second marriage, to oil man Tom Gallagher, brought a more enduring and meaningful connection into her life. Suzanne and Tom were married in 1968, and their union lasted until Tom's tragic passing from lung cancer on January 21, 2000. During their marriage, Suzanne experienced the heartache of a miscarriage, which was undoubtedly a difficult and emotional moment for the couple. Despite this loss, Suzanne and Tom remained devoted to each other throughout their marriage. Their relationship was characterized by love and support, and they faced life's challenges together. Suzanne's nurturing instincts and desire to have children were evident in her marriage to Tom. She expressed a genuine wish to have children with him, but fate had other plans. The couple remained childless, but Suzanne found fulfillment in different ways. In an October 2000 interview, Suzanne candidly addressed the topic of children and her unique path in life. She acknowledged her desire to have children with Tom, but expressed contentment with her role as a nurturer in other aspects of her life. Suzanne had a large extended family, and her nurturing instincts found an outlet in her relationships with friends, colleagues, and the characters she portrayed on screen. Her statement, I'm the mother on every set, highlighted her ability to connect with others and offer support and care even in the absence of biological children. Suzanne Plachette's romantic journey took an unexpected turn in 2001 when she married fellow actor Tom Poston. This union was a poignant and heartwarming reunion of two people who had shared a deep connection spanning several decades. Their history together dates back to 1959, when Suzanne and Tom acted alongside each other in the Broadway comedy Golden Fleecing. During this time, they had not only been professional collaborators, but had also embarked on a romantic relationship. However, as life often unfolds, circumstances lead them in different directions, and they both marry other people. Despite their respective marriages, they managed to maintain a lasting friendship over the next 40 years. Tragically, the passing of their spouses ultimately brought Suzanne Plachette and Tom Poston back together. They found solace and companionship in one another during a time of personal grief and loss. 
the shared experience of widowhood allowed them to rekindle their connection, and in 2001, they decided to marry. Their marriage was a testament to the enduring bond they had shared since their time together in Golden Fleecing. Their love story served as a heartwarming example of how life can offer second chances and opportunities for reconnection. Sadly, their time together as a married couple was not as long as they had hoped. Tom Poston passed away from respiratory failure in Los Angeles on April 30, 2007, marking the end of a loving partnership. Suzanne Plachette, who had shared many years of friendship and love with Tom, mourned his loss deeply. Tragically, Suzanne Plachette herself passed away the following year, leaving behind a legacy of talent and warmth. Their strong connection in life endured even in death, as they are buried close to each other, a testament to the profound bond they shared. In addition to her personal life, it's worth noting that Suzanne Plachette was also related to actor John Plachette, adding another layer to her familial connections within the entertainment industry. Suzanne's life, both personally and professionally, was marked by enduring relationships and a deep love for the people who played significant roles in her journey. Suzanne Plachette's battle with lung cancer was a challenging chapter in her life, marked by medical procedures and a brave spirit. The news of her illness was first made public on August 11, 2006, when her agent, Joel Dean, revealed that Suzanne was undergoing treatment for lung cancer at Cedars-Sinai Medical Center. This revelation came as a shock to many of her fans and the entertainment industry, as she had been a beloved figure on screen for decades. Interestingly, it was during a routine X-ray that the cancer was initially detected. At the time of discovery, the cancer was described as being the size of a grain of sand. The fortunate aspect of this early detection was that the cancer was caught in its earliest stages. This early diagnosis allowed for more effective treatment options and a higher likelihood of successful recovery. Suzanne's treatment plan included chemotherapy, administered as an outpatient, which was aimed at targeting and combating the cancer. Despite the diagnosis, she maintained a positive attitude and was described as being in good spirits by her agent. Her determination and resilience were evident as she embarked on her journey towards recovery. However, during the course of her treatment, Suzanne faced additional health challenges— she was hospitalized for a pulmonary infection, which subsequently led to pneumonia. This setback extended her hospital stay, and there were moments when her health raised concerns. In September 2007, Suzanne made a public appearance at a Bob Newhart show cast reunion, which drew attention due to her arrival in a wheelchair. This raised concerns among fans and the media about her health. However, Suzanne insisted that she was cancer-free and was seated in a regular chair during the actual telecast, demonstrating her determination to be part of the event. In an interview with USA Today around the time of the reunion, Suzanne provided further insight into her health journey. She revealed that, as part of her cancer treatment, a portion of one of her lungs had been surgically removed. This procedure was a significant and courageous step in her battle against the disease. Suzanne Plachette's public disclosure of her cancer battle and her determination to participate in the reunion event served as an inspiration to many. Her openness about her health challenges underscored her strength and resilience in the face of adversity. Despite the obstacles she faced, Suzanne remained a beloved figure in the entertainment world and continued to inspire those who admired her talent and courage. Suzanne Plachette's passing marked the end of a remarkable life and career in the entertainment industry. She passed away in the early evening of January 19, 2008, just 12 days short of her 71st birthday, at her Los Angeles home. Her death was met with an outpouring of grief and tributes from fans, colleagues, and friends who had admired her talent, resilience, and warmth throughout the years. Suzanne's final resting place is in the Hillside Memorial Park Cemetery in Culver City, California, where she is buried close to her beloved third husband, Tom Poston, 
who had passed away the year before. Their proximity in eternal rest symbolized the enduring love and connection they had shared in life. In recognition of her significant contributions to the world of television, Suzanne Plachette was honored posthumously with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for television. The star was awarded on January 31, 2008, and it became the Walk's 2,500th star. In a poignant gesture that reflected her sense of humor and charm, Suzanne requested that her star be placed in front of Fredericks of Hollywood, a well-known lingerie store on Hollywood Boulevard. The unveiling of Suzanne's star had been planned before her passing, and it was attended by notable figures from the entertainment industry. Bob Newhart, Arte Johnson, and Marsha Wallace, who had worked closely with Suzanne during her career, spoke at the ceremony, paying heartfelt tributes to their friend and colleague. Tina Sinatra, daughter of the legendary Frank Sinatra, accepted the star on Suzanne Plachette's behalf, further emphasizing the impact she had on the entertainment world. What do you think about the tragic life of Suzanne Plachette? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.